weight in gold, and that we need many more nurses throughout the country. There's a massive nursing shortage. Uh, the world would be a much better place if there were more people like you. I'm so glad Eileen chooses the question. I was really like, like so much responsibility. <laughs> sharing, Caleb. Uh, and your story is not unique. Uh, you know, we have to try and give kids the kind of home environment that will actually prepare them to learn. Another thing I would say is don't sell yourself short, man. I mean, it, like, it sounds like you're saying it's like, oh, I could have done that. True, you could have, but you're going to do great regardless. I mean, you're a student now in college. <laughs> project a little bit because I, I know a little bit um, it's like you know it's like you can think to yourself it's like oh I could have gone to some fancier school which might be true but the fact is it's much more important who you are and what you do than the environment and that's not just me talking that's actually a lot of data and studies that if you take someone and put them in a in like school X or school Y and then the same person the outcomes end up being essentially the same so as long as you apply yourself Caleb the sky's the limit man don't let anyone tell you different In terms of giving kids a better chance to learn, um, you know, freedom dividends number one. Uh, number two is trying to share some of the burdens. And I, I'm a parent of two kids. I have to say, I was stunned um, when I realized how hard raising a kid was. I mean, how many of you are parents? Yeah, so if, if you're a parent, you know what I'm talking about. I have in the past in my book where I talk about how being a parent is like being an entrepreneur, where it's super hard, but no one talks about it. First two years are brutal. Everyone lies. <laughs> <laughs> All these about being a parent. Uh, and when I think about all of the moms who are single moms around the country, 90% of single parents are single moms. When you talk about single parents, it's essentially a single mom. And 40% of American children now are born to single moms. Uh, and so you think about what that trajectory is for that family, for that child. The data is actually different between little boys and little girls. So if you have a little girl who's raised by a single mom, she sees super mom every day. And little girls are actually uh, more adaptable and better at school earlier. And so the outcomes for little girls raised by single moms are uh, generally OK. Unfortunately, for little boys, the data is not as positive. Because if you're a little boy raised by a single mom, you don't have a male role model. You think that guys are kind of losers. Uh, and little boys are more sensitive to parental time input than little girls. Little boys also tend to have more academic and behavioral problems at the school level. And so college attendance and other things for little boys raised by single moms are more problematic. So if this is clearly the new normal in American life, then we need to try and surround those kids and single moms who are raising those kids in particular with much more in the way of support and structure. So universal childcare would be one huge step in the right direction so that if the mom is working that she has some place to, to bring the child will actually look out for the child 
that's one thing that we need to make happen as quickly as possible. We need paid maternal leave in the United States so the mom can actually spend time with the kid in the earliest days. Here's the list of countries that do not have paid maternal leave in the United States. Uh, it's us, Lesotho, Swaziland, Papua New Guinea, Liberia. That is the whole list. I would suggest to you all that the United States of America should get off that list as soon as possible. Yeah. Yeah. And then if you are a single parent raising your, your, your child, we need to create more even communal living arrangements. Because one of the things that I found shocking as a parent is how much of an island you're on as a parent. And if you're a parent, you know what I mean? And like, it's one reason why so many of us, when you have kids, what do you do? You try and move to wherever your family is, or you get family to move to you. Because family members are the only ones who can actually uh, give your kid the kind of nourishment that they need emotionally and, and uh, um, socially. And so if that's not realistic for many Americans, we need to try and create that village type at atmosphere, uh, even in communal living arrangements, where if you are a parent, you can like prepare a meal for a whole host of kids one day and then know that the next day someone else will prepare it and you're not stuck giving the kid the TV dinner or, or feeling guilty about their nutrition every single day. So these are steps that we need to take as a society because we have to accept the fact that the historical image we all have of like the family, the white picket fence, and like the, the, you know, the two parents, like the neighborhood and whatnot, is not a reality for millions uh, of American children. So we need to build a new type of foundation and community as quickly as possible. child, I believe no, being neurologically atypical is the new normal in American life. And so we need to try and uh, support families and have resources and expertise in schools to be able to support kids of every kind of learning profile and say that, look, this is now the new normal and we shouldn't treat these kids as somehow not the normal.